Adam, what more can you tell us? Well, Jay, the saga that never ends has reached something of an end, at least for now, in Oakland with the Raiders officially releasing Antonio Brown as he requested be done early this morning. The release after the Raiders fined him over $215,000, told him that he would not be entitled to any termination pay in a separate letter and basically voided his guarantees. So I would imagine that there's a battle over the $29.125 million that was remaining on his contract in guaranteed money. The Raiders and Antonio Brown might not be done doing business yet as they haggle over that money, that large sum of money. And now Antonio Brown becomes a free agent, free to sign with another team. And what has transpired over the course of the last week certainly is not going to help him get the type of contract that he was looking for. It'll be interesting to see if and when, how many teams are interested in him. I would assume that the union will file an expedited grievance on his behalf. And the story that basically has come to something of an end in Oakland continues on in a different way with Antonio Free going on with everything happening right now that has continued to happen all summer long. So let's just bring it all together. In summation, he goes, he gets frostbite on his feet, he shows up to training camp in a hot air balloon, doesn't attend meetings, pulls out the team for finding him, challenges or curses out his general manager, posts a video of a conversation, a private conversation he had with John Gruden last night, demands his release, and ultimately gets his release. And Antonio Brown's chapter with the Raiders, one of the most bizarre chapters that has ever unfolded with any player on any team at any point in the history of football, has now come to something of an end. You've been covering this story. At what point did this start to go wrong where you realized, uh-oh, this might not end well? Huh. When the Raiders traded for him and there was not a lot of interest in him around the league. And Pittsburgh was willing to trade arguably the most productive wide receiver in all of football for a third and fifth round draft pick while eating $21 million against their own salary cap. It was important enough for Pittsburgh to have $21 million count against their cap this year to trade him. Isn't that a sign that something is wrong? That's a sign to me. Apparently, the Raiders didn't see that. They thought, what made them think they could handle it? Basically, John Gruden wanted playmakers, and they thought that they were getting a bargain on Antonio Brown for a third and fifth round pick. And everybody always thinks that they're going to be the one that controls the guy. But I think that we've seen his conduct become more and more outrageous over time and more and more unique and more and more Oh, how do we say this? Um, eclectic. And so, basically, now we have a situation where this drama has unfolded in a crazy way. What's the market for Antonio Brown right now? <sighs> Let's go back to when the Raiders were shopping him, when the Steelers were shopping him. It was not exactly robust. Now, at that point in time, there were a couple of teams that had to be compensated, a couple of parties. you got to compensate the Steelers and Antonio Brown. In this case, you just have to compensate Antonio Brown. But I would say this to you. Do you think that there's a team out there that's going to be more willing or less willing to give him guaranteed money than at the time that the Steelers were trading him? Everyone, thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports, more analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. We'll see you there.